So anyway, the story of Gundicha Marjana, the cleansing of the Gundicha temple, is in the Madhya Leela chapter 12. It begins after Mahaprabhu has returned from his South Indian tour. So the king, Prataparudra, was in Katak. And he sent a letter to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya requesting audience with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sarvabhoma immediately wrote back a letter, it's not possible, he won't, it's not possible, he won't meet with the king. So then he sent a second letter, he said that if I cannot get the mercy of, of Gaur Hari, then what is the use of my life, what is the use of my kingdom? I will give up everything and become a mendicant. So when he received the second letter, then Sarvabhoma thought, what to do? I know he'll become upset if I try to propose this. So he went to Sriman Mahaprabhu and told him the wonderful love that Mahapratapurudra, Maha, uh, Maharaj Pratapurudra has for him. And Mahaprabhu became very angry. You know that how can a sannyasi meet with the king? People will laugh. Huh? He said, don't ever bring this subject up again. Hmm? So then Sarvabhama, he went to all the devotees. He showed the letter that the king is going to get, get, become a mendicant. What can we do? So all the devotees, they discuss, they know every time we bring this up, he becomes unhappy. Still, what we can do is we can go there and talk about the love of the king for the, we don't request him to go visit him, but we tell him to just describe the love of the king for Lord Chaitanya. So they all went to visit Lord Chaitanya, but nobody could speak a word. Mahaprabhu said, why have you come? I can see you want to speak something, but you're remaining quiet. Lord Nityananda said, what can we do? We have come. We do not know if it is fitting or unfitting. Huh? But we know you won't visit uh, uh, King Prachapruja. Oh, so you want me to go to Kadak to visit the king, Mahaprabhu? We would think the, the Lord would allow him to come to Puri to visit. Mahaprabhu was suggesting that he was ready to go to Kadak. This is very amazing, astonishing. And then he again began to describe that I'm a sannyasi, how can I meet with the king? The, he's in pounds and shilling men, Visayi, all these arguments he gave. Uh, still the devotees described the the love that even they described he's going to become a mendica they said with the uh, ivory earring in his ear Prabhupada said in the purport there's a special type of yogi I can't remember the name of the yogi but they have an ivory earring in one ear I believe in their left ear Prabhupada says huh? so hearing the devotees talk about the glories of the love of Maharaj Prataparudra for himself Mahaprabhu externally was very angry, but internally his heart was softened. Huh? So then he said, all right, I cannot meet with the king, but you can give my outer garment to him, because that is not different from myself. So from Govinda, Sarvabhama got an outer garment of Mahaprabhu, and he packed it up and he sent it off to Katak to the king. King was overjoyed and began dancing in ecstasy, huh? hoping that maybe someday Mahap that Mahaprabhu would allow him to get his audience. Mm. Uh. Again, another time, somebody else again proposed that he meet the, again glorified. Oh, it was Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy returned from South India, retired actually. It was after discussing with Mahaprabhu on the bank of the Gadavari. He decided, what is the use of remaining in government service? Let me spend my days with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the king heard this, he was overjoyed. He gave him a pinch, lifetime pension and gave him permission to go and remain in Puri with Mahaprabhu. Hmm? But he requested Ramananda Roy, you please uh, 
inter intercede on my behalf that Lord Chaitanya should give me his audience. Otherwise, how will I maintain my life? So Mahabharu was overjoyed to see Ramananda Roy. He stayed there for some time. Then he brought up the subject. And Mahabharu said, you too. You want me to go see Prataparuta? Huh? And again, he gave all the arguments. How can a king be associated with someone who's a scent enjoyer? He maybe have so many wonderful qualities. Huh? Just like a pot of milk may be very wonderful, but it has one drop of poison. The whole thing is spoiled. So he may be a great devotee, but one thing is spoiled. This name, King, spoils everything. Still, if you want me to go visit him, then if Damanar Pandit will allow me to go, I will certainly go. Because <laughs> we know, we remember Damanar Pandit, he's always scolding the Lord, whatever tiny little uh, thing, uh, etiquette he doesn't follow them. But Damanar Pandit becomes very upset. But Dhamanar was what am I? I'm just an ordinary jeev. How can I stop you? You're the independent supreme personality got it. What are you saying? I'm just an ordinary jeev. Hmm? He said, no, no. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Huh? Why, are you saying, why are you saying about me? In this way, he again refused. He said, just like on a piece of white cloth, one black spot uh, becomes very prominent. So as soon as I will associate with the king, as soon as some people find out some fault in a sannyasi, they advertise it like wildfire. My life will be ruined, this life and the next. Huh? But still, uh, if Damodar Pandit will give me permission, I will go down to <laughs> You are the independent Supreme Lord. Whatever you want to do, you will, you will do. I know you will see this king. Hmm. So then after this, Mahaprabhu called Kashi Mishra and the superintendent of Gunicha Temple, or no, the Jagannath Temple, Hmm. He called them to his room. He said, Tomorrow is Gundicha Marjana, cleansing of the Gundicha temple. Every year it is done by the king's men, but they are just paid servants. They have no love or devotion, and they don't do it very well because they're not interested. They're just getting paid. You tell the king to arrange that I, myself, and my men, we will clean the Gundicha temple. And all the devotees said, My Lord, uh, this is not a proper service for somebody like you. But still, if this is your desire, uh, the interest of attendance, and immediately I will arrange everything. And immediately he sent hundreds of brooms and hundreds of clay pots to do the cleansing. So the next day, Mahaprabhu called all the devotees and he personally uh, put chandan on all of their bodies. Mahaprabhu was so merciful. He put chandan on all the bodies of the devotees. Then he gave each one a broom and or some pots, huh? and with a big ecstatic kirtan, dancing and dancing like madmen, they went down the Bharadanda, the grand road to Gundicha temple. Hmm? And then they took those brooms and they began to sweep and sweep and sweep and sweep. Hmm? And Mahaprabhu was personally sweeping. And the whole temple room, the, sink, the, the, the uh, altar room, boga room, everything they cleansed very... And Mahaprabhu, he made a big pile. Eh? And he took that pile of dirt, dirt and sands and grain and straw and put it in his outer garment and threw it outside and all the devotees followed suit. Then Mahaprabhu said, again we will cleanse. Mm -hmm. And again they brought all hundreds of brooms and everyone was sweeping here and there, getting finer straw and grass. And uh, Mahaprabhu said, uh, we will tell your devotion by the amount that you collect. And everyone was sweeping, they collected their piles, still Mahaprabhu's pile was bigger than everyone else's put together. Eh? And those who didn't, who collected less, he said, you should try harder. And those who collected more, instead of pay, praising them, he, he criticized that you were collecting so nicely, why you're not teaching others? And they were feeling ashamed. Hmm? Then Mahaprabhu, even finer grains, he began to collect. Hmm? Third time, and he said, whoever collects, whoever collects less than those devotees will have to pay a fine of sweet cakes and sweet rice. <laughs> so in this way, every corner of the temple, the ceiling, the walls, every the bogmandir, the yard, everywhere they cleansed and threw all the dust outside the temple. Then, 
uh, then there was hundreds of men waiting with water pots. Hmm? There are hundreds of men waiting with water pots. And as soon as Mahaprabhu gave the word, they all rushed into the temple and began throwing water here and there all over the floor. They even threw it on the ceiling and it ran down the walls and here. Uh, and everyone began to clean the whole temple inside, outside, everywhere. And streams of water were flowing out of the doors. And again, they would throw pots of water. Huh? Uh? And everyone began to uh, wash the throwing, throwing on the ceiling, let it run down the walls and across the floors. Everybody was cleaning the temple over and over and over again. And everybody was chanting the names of Krishna. Everybody, somebody called for a pot calling Krishna, Krishna. Another one accepted a pot calling Krishna, Krishna. Whatever anybody wanted was Krishna, 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 Krishna. Sometimes they would smash into each other, bam, and smash the pots. And they would, other men were bringing more pots. The lake where they were bringing the water became so crowded that people were going to a well. Huh? In this way, Mahaprabhu, it's described, the Mahaprabhu personally cleaned the singhasan with his own cloth. It says, Sri Haste, Haste means hand. Sri Haste Karena Simasan Ermarjan Prabhu Agi Jala Ani Deya Bhaktagana. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to wash the sitting place of Lord Jagannath with his own hands, and all the bodies, devotees began to bring water to the Lord. Bhaktagana Kare Griham Madhya Prakshalan Nija Nija Haste Kare Mandira Marjan. All the devotees within the temple began to watch. Each one had a broom in his hand, and this way they cleansed the temple of the Lord. Keha Jala Ani Deya Mahaprabhu Kare. Kaya jala deya tanra charana upare. Someone brought water to pour on the hands of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and someone poured water on his lotus feet. Kaya lukaya kare se jala pana. Kaya magi laya kaya anya kare dana. That water fell from the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was drunk by someone who hit himself. Someone else begged for that water, another person was giving that water in charity. Nija Vastra, Vastra means cloth. Nija Vastra, Nija means his own. Nija Vastra Kaila Prabhu Griha Samarjan. Mahaprabhu Nija Vastri Majila Singhasan. Lord mopped the rooms with his own clothes. He polished the throne with them also. Hmm? So Mahaprabhu was using his own cloth. Huh? Huh? And still again, they. He brought more, had ordered them to bring more water pots. And they were cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. Again, some Bengali Vaishnava poured the water on Mahaprabhu's feet and drank it. Mahaprabhu immediately called Sarabhadamadar, look at this Bengali Vaishnava, what he's done. In the temple of the Lord, he's pouring water on my feet and drinking it. <laughs> he's pouring water on my feet and drinking it. This is a big offense. What will happen to me? So Sarabhadamadar grabbed that Vaishnava and threw him out the door. <laughs> Then they began to clean the outside roads. Hmm? Just like one time in 1994, I was present for Gundi Chamarjana in Puri. And since we're foreigners, they wouldn't allow us in, but we saw everybody was going inside. Everybody had a little chai cup about this big full of water and three sticks. <laughs> three sticks of a broom. <laughs> You've seen the Indian broom, they had three little sticks in like that. So we thought, well, we can't go inside, at least, but Lord Jagannath has to walk down this road to go inside the temple. So we told Bhadracharo, you bring uh, some buckets and brooms. So he bought buckets and brooms and we were cleaning and the Bengali devotees were tearing the brooms out of our hand. They were, we would pick up the dirt, they would take it off from our hands. Everybody was amazed that all the foreign devotees were cleaning the road. And we made it nice and clean. I guess nobody ever cleaned, but here specifically mentions Chaitanya Chaturmita Mahaprabhu cleared the road also. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Then, next door to Gundicha temple is the Nishringa temple. Everyone went to take darshan of Lord Nishringa Dev. And actually that time also was amazing because no foreigners allowed in Nishringa Dev temple, but everything was so ecstatic because we, because all the Gaudiya Mats were there and we also had a big kirtan. So we, everybody started all these big kirtan parties, each kirtan party into the temple. And 
we just went right in with everybody else and nobody stopped us. We went right up, touched the lotus feet of Lord Nishingadev and circumambulated around and went out. Nobody, it was an amazing time. Nobody stopped us. Hmm? So then for, after worshiping Lord Nishingadev, they took a big kirtan party down to Indradumna Sarovar and everyone began to bathe. And after they bathed, then they went to a garden. Hmm? And Mahaprabhu had all the devotees sit down in the garden in rows. And then he himself uh, began to distribute prasadam. They brought prasadam for hundreds of men. They began to distribute the prasadam. Uh, but again, no one eat till Mahaprabhu sat down. So Mahaprabhu sat down. He put Sarvabhoma on his Bhattacharya on his left side. Uh, and Lord Nityananda was on his, was nearby on his right side. Hmm. And all the great devotees, it named so many devotees, Paramananda Puri and, and so many Swarup Damodar, everybody was serving prasad. Uh, but Mahaprabhu told him, give me only lafra. Lafra is a very simple preparation, just made of mixed sabji. Hmm? Uh, so they gave Mahaprabhu lafra. He said, give nice prasad to all the other devotees. So all the devotees were eating prasad and Mahaprabhu knew who liked what. He said, give him that one. Give him that preparation. Give him that preparation. In this way, the fun was going on. Then somehow... Jagadananda appeared with first-class prasadam. Huh? And by trick, anyway, anyhow, he put it on Mahaprabhu's plate. And Mahaprabhu appeared externally, at first appeared a little angry, then he looked at Jagarananda, then he realized that if I don't eat, Jagarananda will fast. <laughs> so he began to take first class prasad and he had them delivered to Sarvabhama also. Huh? In this way, by tricks, they kept putting more and more first class prasad on Mahaprabhu's plate and on Sarvabhama's. And, and Mahaprabhu said, just see this fellow. Huh? Actually, no, it was Gopinath Patanayak came. He said, just see this Sarvabhama before he was a dry logician. Now he's enjoying prasad up to his neck. <laughs> and this is all the mercy of Sriman Mahaprabhu. And he said, yes, I was living like with these jackal logicians, just count, counting. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but this Mahaprabhu has saved me from this fate. I was a complete monist, missing out on this nectar of devotional service. Meanwhile, Nitai and Advaita were sitting next to each other and, and they began a funny fight, a mock fight. Huh? Advaita says, what is this? I'm sitting here with this crazy man. <laughs> Mahaprabhu, he's a sannyasi. Sannyasi can take prasad in anyone's house. But I'm a householder. I, I do not know who it is, a caste, or what is his family, what is his position, what is his character, and I'm eating with him. What will happen to me? And <laughs> Nityananda said, you, you lousy monist, you are telling that everything is Brahm, everything is Brahm. That is the worst thing for devotional service. I'm sitting next to you and eating, what will happen to my devotional service? In this way, they distributed more and more prasad to Nityananda and Harida. And the more prasad they gave, the more jokingly they began to talk. <laughs> Finally, when all the devotees were filled up to the neck, uh, Mahaprabhu uh, bade all the devotees farewell and all the devotees chanting and dancing in ecstasy, they all left. Huh? And it's described that they had cleaned the temple so thoroughly that it appeared like Mahaprabhu's own mind. You can just imagine the mind of Mahaprabhu, how clean and clear. He said, just like Mahaprabhu's own mind had manifest. Huh? And all the devotees felt happy because their hearts had also been clean. Prabhupada told us that clean, cleansing the temple means cleansing your heart. So this is a secret meaning of Gundicha. Uh, by cleansing the temple of the Lord, we cleanse our heart. Because now Lord Jagannath is coming there to Gundicha, which is actually Vrindavan. Hmm? This is, he comes as the confidential part of the Sri Mandir is, is Dwarka. And this Gunisha Mandir is Vrindavan. <clears throat> so this is a secret meaning. that, In order for to put the Lord in our heart, our heart has to be clean. Now we're filled with so many thorny desires. How Lord can stay there in our hearts? 
Huh? We have to cleanse out all the thorns and rocks and stones of material desires from within our heart. And sometimes we're thinking, oh, this is impossible. How will we ever become free from material desire? And I was reminded one time when I was in Melbourne, Australia, the devotees told me in the previous temple they had a very high Vyasasa. And Prabhupada was sitting way up above all the devotees. And he was giving one of those classes that if you have even pinch of material desire, you will stay in this material world. You will not go back to home back to God. Just harping on this point. If you have just a little bit of material desire, you will not leave this material world. You'll have to come back and not go back to home back to Godhead. And he was just over and over emphasizing this point and all the faces of the devotees went hopeless. So then Prabhupada got up from the Vyasa, ended the class, he got up from the Vyasa sun. He looked at all the hopeless faces of the devotees. There was a big tall Vyasa, he took one step down and he looked all around and he said, even if you're 90% Krishna conscious, you will go back to home, back to God. And all the devotees went, jai. Prabhupada took another step down. He said, even 80% and you will go back to home, back to God. And all the devotees said, jai. And Prabhupada took one more step down. He said, 75%, but no less. And all the devotees went, jai. <laughs> so we may think it's hopeless case, hmm? but Prabhupada is giving us 25% discount. <laughs> Not only is he discounting, I was personally present in Los Angeles. Uh, Prabhupada was sitting in the Vyasa and he said, you just chant 16 rounds, follow these four regular principles, and you will go back to home, back to Godhead in this lifetime. I guarantee it. And all the devotees went, <gasps> and Prabhupada paused. He said, I guarantee it. Hmm? All the devotees went, <laughs> So we're getting guarantee and 25% discount. So let's take advantage of this time where we don't have anything else to do. We can chant, we can read, we can study more and cleanse our hearts uh, because chanting of the names of the Lord and chanting His pastimes, reading about His pastimes. Srinvata Svakata Krishna Punya Sravana Kirtani Vidyanto Yabhadrani Virunoti Dhruvitsatam All the inauspicious things in the heart are cleansed out from the heart. Uh, so we should take advantage of this time to cleanse our heart, we want Lord to come there. But how Lord, we can invite the Lord to a thorny, thorny, thorny place. We have to take out all the thorns of material desires, and then Lord can come and sit in our heart, nice, clean heart, and will be the perfection of our Krishna consciousness. Oh, Gundi Darshan, it says Gundi Darshan is adopa. That because that is that is the real darshan for the Beng, the Vaishnava Bengali, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Because we don't like to see Krishna and Dwarka, we like to see Krishna and Braj and Gundicha's Braj. So it said Adopa that even if you get that Adopa, that darshan in Gundicha, for one moment, that is equal to 10 years of taking darshan in Sri Mandir. Hmm? One verse is there in the Shastra. So this is this is why Mahaprabhu in, called all the devotees every year for Rathiatra. Hmm? And that they should see the Lord not in Vaikuntha, but see the Lord in uh, Rindavan. Even when we know that when Lord is in Gundicha, on the fifth day, Lakshmiji comes with all her servants. We call it Hera Panchami. Hera means to see. She comes to see the Lord. Uh, uh, but Lord Jagannath understands his wife is coming angry mood. He has all his servants close the temple doors. And she just criticizes like anything. Huh? But Yoga Maya tells her, huh? if you want, it's like the pastime of Bandirvan. Huh? She, Lakshmiji, she wanted to enter the Raslila, cross the Jamuni into Raslila. And Yoga Maya came and said, Are you ready to make cow patties? He said, First of all, you have to take birth in a, in, from a gopi's womb. Are you ready for that? Nope. <laughs> then you'll have to get married to a gopa. Hmm? Are you ready to leave your husband and marry a gopa? 
Hmm? Then you have to make cow patties. Is I never made cow patties? You'd have to make milk cows. I never milk cows. They said, if you don't become follower of the gopis, you cannot enter the Rasdila. So then, not only that, you will have to leave, even that husband you will have to leave and, and go to Krishna and accept him as a paramour. Lakshmi is uh, trembling. No, 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 no way. So she's still there in Bailvan. We go there and take darshan of her. But she wasn't able to cross the Jamun and enter Brindavan. So how is it that we're here in Brindavan? This is only by the mercy behind me is this Samadhi of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He's interceding on our behalf. Just like one time, there's one, my very old God brother and very senior devotee, was one of the original Brindavan devotees, Bishal Prabhu. Prabhupada was walking around the temple, just like every day we take Prabhupada around the temple. So Bishal came there and said, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. So Prabhupada put it, his, planted his cane on the ground very firmly and said, So, you like this place? And Bishal said, Oh Prabhupada, it's wonderful. Then with a flick of his wrist, Prabhupada said, Then take it, it's yours. So this is the power. We are totally unqualified. But the pure devotee, just by a flick of his wrist, he can give you Vrindavan. And somehow we're just praying every morning to Prabhupada that you're so merciful. This is your special mercy upon us. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.